everybody, it's me. I am back. I did not die, I promise. I'm back after a long hiatus from YouTube. I am so sorry, I keep neglecting this channel and I don't know why. But I am back now and today I thought I'd talk to you about the 10 things that I wish I knew before I started my small business. Now, I've been running my Etsy store for about three years now and I wouldn't say I'm a really successful business, but there is a lot of things that I've learned over the years and that I'm still learning now. And I think the things that I've learned over the years are very useful for anyone, really. I will also be attempting to make a stress whale ball. Sorry, say that again. I will be attempting to make a stress ball whale while I'm chatting to you. So we'll see how that goes. Normally, I can't speak and crochet at the same time. So this is going to be a real challenge for me. So the first thing I wish I knew when I started my small business is to stay consistent. Now that's not just only in posting to social media or trying to promote your business on social media. That's also to do with these sorts of things that you are trying to sell. And I struggle with this all the time. I like to make crochet things, but I also make stickers and I also like to make keychains, bookmarks. I mean, obviously they're all in the same sort of ballpark, but you need to make sure that if you are making those sorts of things, you need to stay consistent with them and make sure that you have a sort of consistent brand that people can follow over the years. And of course, you do sort of need to stay consistent with posting to social media as well. But if you feel like you need a day off, have a day off. Don't force yourself because it will make it worse, honestly. And if you think you need a bit of time off, like a week or two weeks, even a month, because you feel like you're getting art block or you feel like there's just a block in your mind, take that time off because you're not going to get any work done in that time. If your mind is blocked, there's you're not going to be putting out things that are good basically most of the time. I'm all for taking off mental health breaks because I know I've needed them before so make sure that if you feel like that you are taking the time off and you might also benefit from a posting schedule. I try and post at least three times a week just to make sure that I'm still consistent and I'm still out there on social media and people can see me but again as I said if you feel like you can't do that, don't worry about it. Just do what you can at the end of the day. Try and stay consistent, but if that is too difficult, then do what you can. The next thing that I wish I knew when I started my business is that you're not going to get sales every day, and that is okay. You are not going to get a sale every day of the month, and it's honestly all right. I mean, you have to take into context what is going on in the world. Since the pandemic, things have not been the same. Everyone's in a bit of a crisis at the moment. There's a financial crisis going on and things like that. So you just have to take that into mind when you're thinking about how many sales you're getting a month or a year. It doesn't mean that you're a bad artist or a bad business owner if you're getting small amounts of sales or if you're getting one sale a month. That doesn't make you a bad artist or a bad business owner. You've just got to take into consideration what's going on in the world and maybe you just haven't found your target audience yet. I know I'm still trying to find mine at the moment um, because it's difficult. There's lots and lots of different niches online and people trying to sell their stuff or just trying to make art. And it's sometimes very difficult to find your target audience. So just be mindful of all of those things. It can be difficult, but don't get disheartened because it doesn't mean that you're any less if people aren't buying from you straight away, especially if you've just started. It's going to be more difficult for you when you start because, you you know, nobody knows who you really are or your business is. But once you get the ball rolling, things will become easier. And like I said before, I know that I sometimes only get one sale a month and that's OK. You've just got to take into consideration what's going on in the world and also if you found your target audience yet. Number three on my list of things I wish I knew before I started my business is to make things that you would want to buy 
not what you think other people want to buy or even just make art for you now obviously you do need to keep into consideration whether you think people are actually going to buy what you're making or not but you will feel 10 times happier if you're making things that you could see yourself buying or that makes you happy when i first started out i was making these contemporary art prints that i thought you know what other people might like to see these in their home and i was getting absolutely no sales because it wasn't what was making me happy it was what i thought was going to make other people happy so just keep that in mind when you are creating try and make things that you would like to see in your own home or stickers that you would like to have in your own journal i am way happier now that i'm making little character animals in all of my stickers and trying to crochet little you know cute animals and stuff because that is what brings me joy apparently and it also brings other people joy they like to see the little characters on stickers in art prints on keychains on pins and i have a lot of love for my crochet stuff as well so you will find that the sorts of things that you like other people will like as well make sure it's something that makes you happy and that you would want to buy yourself the fourth thing i wish i knew don't obsess over the numbers i know we've all done it you're obsessing over how many followers you have on instagram on tiktok on youtube i know i still do it and i still look at all the likes i get on my posts and stuff but you really need to try not to obsess over it it is so difficult because you want people to like you and you want people to follow you because that is validation that is telling you that you know you matter and like what you do matters oh that was deep <laughs> but at the end of the day it really doesn't matter you will be so much happier if you're not constantly checking how many likes you've got checking how many people have followed you a day sometimes even checking how many people have looked at your store if you have an etsy store you will get a little analytic thing on the front of your um app that lets you know how many people have viewed it a day and that sort of thing I try not to look at it because if it's low views then it gets me down and it makes me feel like I don't want to make anything that day because I'm like well I've got low views so there's no point in trying but that is completely the wrong way to look at it if obsessing over numbers is something that you also do please please try not to look at it on Instagram you can hide the likes that you get so that you're not you know constantly looking at it and maybe you're worried about what other people think as well that's okay you can hide those likes and nobody has to know and if you are worried about making videos or posts try and put a creative twist onto it and i assure you that people will like it you know what makes you unique and different from everyone else do you crochet like me or do you make your own art what type of way could you put your twist on the video maybe there's a viral trend you would like to try how could you put your own twist on it how could you say this is me and this is what i do the fifth thing i knew when i started is to post about not just your your business post about yourself as well what's going on in your life people want to know the people that follow you want to know what's going on with you I try to post when I'm making something new or when I'm starting to draw something new. I always try to post. And then I also give a little insight to what's happening in my day. Maybe I went out and got some bubble tea. People are interested in that apparently. I always think about when I follow other businesses online and I like to see what they're doing in their day or, you know, a little update on their life, what's going on. So I try to do the same. I try and talk about what I'm doing in my day. If there's anything important coming up, I try to talk to them about that. Show a bit of who you are in your business as well. Obviously, you can show that through your art and through your crocheting or whatever, whatever it is you do. But it's also good to try and show it through little stories on Instagram or TikTok or things like that. Oh, <laughs> Just so people know who the person is behind the business. This whale is turning out a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. But uh, we roll. We keep going. Number six. If you don't need to, don't try and look for manufacturers or try and find people online who custom make things for you. Try and do it yourself first. 
this is mainly if you're starting out and you know you've just started your business because a lot of manufacturers or websites that make custom things for you will ask for you to make them in bulk or will have a minimum amount that you can make with them a lot of the times it will be like with stickers it'll be about 25 to 50 and it can be quite expensive so if you can try and make it yourself first and then when you've got a bit of a following and you've got consistent sales coming in maybe then try and find a manufacturer who can make them for you just so they can take a bit of the load off of you it's really easy if you're trying to make stickers and that sort of thing yourself because uh, you can literally just get sticker paper and if you've got a printer you can print them out and then just cut them out with a, a pair of scissors that's what i used to do and then when i when i got a few more orders in and i knew that i was getting consistent sales all the time I got a silhouette machine which now helps me to cut the stickers out i still don't really use a manufacturer for stickers i do use manufacturers for pins and keychains and you know sort of acrylic things that i know that i can't make myself that's another thing if you don't think you can make it yourself then try and look into it and try and look into finding manufacturers who can make it for you but if it's expensive maybe hold out because until you know that you're going to be successful and the actual interest in it try not to commit to it just yet for example a few years ago i was really into washi tape um, and i thought if i made my own maybe uh, people would like it and i could sell it i got about 50 made and it was quite expensive and i have sold about 10 of them so just bear in mind if you think it's going to sell straight away or if you think maybe it's one of those items that people some people will like but not everyone will just keep that in mind as well because you might end up with a lot of stock that you can't sell or you know you might have spent a lot of money on something that isn't selling very well in the end number seven and this ties into sort of some of the other stuff i've said before but make sure to take time out for yourself like I said before, when I was talking about staying consistent, if you feel like you're getting art block, take time off. But even if you're not feeling like you're getting art block or you feel like there's a block on your head and in your mind, take time off for yourself anyway. I mean, I also work a part time job alongside running this business. So I sometimes need a bit of time just to myself, just to do things that I want to and to sort of step away from it is good because it gives me time to think about things that I would like to make in the future it clears up my head a bit more and I can you know do things without feeling guilty for not making a cro new crochet item or making new stickers and things like that it's good to have a bit of time away every now and again even if it's just for a few days just so you're not constantly thinking about it and it's not constantly on your mind spend time with family and friends when you can try and do stuff like going out going to the cinema just so you aren't constantly thinking about running an etsy store or a business and it's not taking over every single part of your life number eight invest in things that will make your life easier now a lot of these are just like little things like sticker storage they make my life so much easier i can sort out all of my stickers having little boxes to put stuff in is always good and i also invested in buying a little tripod with a little light on it so that i can make videos and i don't have to worry about having the right angle i have a tripod that can help me do that as well so try and invest in things that will make your life easier when it comes to running your business number nine do your research especially when you are starting to run your business it is a good idea to do a bit of research on whatever sort of platform you're using whether that's i don't know squarespace etsy shopify do your research on the platform that you're using even if it's your own website maybe i know there's a lot of website builders so sort of research the website site builder that you're trying to use just so you understand completely how it works you know a lot of those sorts of websites like etsy and shopify have um seo search they're very important 
for getting your items out there and your products for people to see and do your research into you know social media and how it works i mean a lot of the time the algorithms change and that's because they're always trying to hopefully make it better for us on social media but that's not always the case so you need to do a bit of research and figure out how to sort of use things to your advantage try and do a bit of research into the website you're using and a bit into social media if you would like to even promote your stuff on social media just so you need to know what you're up against basically i wouldn't say that social media is the greatest place for artists or small businesses in general but it can be if you use it to your advantage and you do your research about how it works and finally the tenth thing i wish i knew before i started my business is to just have fun no matter what you're doing Obviously, hopefully, if you're starting to run a small business, you're doing something that you already love or you're interested in. But make sure that when you're posting to social media or when you're making anything, you are having fun. Whenever I'm making videos on social media, I make sure that I think it's funny when I post it. And I make sure that, you know, I'm having a fun time. I'm not like, oh God, I have to make another video. I make sure that I think it's funny and that I think other people will think it's funny because I'm just having a fun time. I'm just having a great time making videos and, and I try and make pieces of art and stickers that make me laugh and make me happy. I made a piece of art the other day about farting because I thought it was funny. So make sure you are just having fun with whatever you're doing. Make sure you can find a little bit of happiness, even if it's in doing things like posting to social media or all that sort of stuff, because it can be tedious and we all know it can be. So whether it's your full time job or just a little hobby on the side, please make sure you are having fun because otherwise your business will not flourish and grow like you wanted to, because you'll start getting our block all the time because you won't be having fun. And you won't be interested in what you're doing and it won't bring you happiness. So just make sure that you're not trying to please others and you're just doing it for you, having fun, being happy. It is way more difficult to crochet and talk at the same time than I thought it was going to be. I'm just going to finish this bottom part and then I will make his little fins and then he'll be done. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you for watching. I really hope this was helpful in any way if you're thinking of starting a business or you know if you've already started one like me i love watching youtube videos like this so i thought i'd make my own one and hopefully i can impart some wisdom on someone but also this crochet pattern is by rin.meow21 i think that's how you say it on instagram it's a free pattern that i really like using because it's absolutely adorable so if you were interested make sure to give it a little look I will uh, link it down in the bio of this video so you can have a look at it. I've just finished off his body and given him little eyes. I'll give him a little smile and make his little fins and then I will come back when he is all done. And there we go. He is all done. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you took something from this or maybe you just enjoyed watching it. If so, please let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next and uh, give it a like if you thought it was helpful or if you just enjoyed, like I said. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.